farming. Depending on who you are, the word conjures up images of a pastoral life. Horses and cows and pigs and chickens. Or the word conjures up images of the clever and resourceful ancient peoples that first started farming. Either way, our world has been built on agriculture. It provides the backbone for our nations, and without it, we would be nothing. Back in the early 1900s, everyone knew a farmer. The man with the straw hat, who provided nutrition for the community. Then, starting with the tractor, many new innovations brought farming to a whole new level. Hybrid seeds, new and bigger implements, and much safer farm structures. Today we see the large combines that dominate the fields of North America. Harvest yields this high have never before been witnessed by the world. As well with the organic farming movement growing by 20% each year, newer and more environmental techniques are being developed, such as no-till and cover cropping, leading to a lesser dependence on herbicides and synthetic fertilizers. But our valuable agricultural heritage is being threatened, along with the recent major advancements such as organic and sustainable farming. Urban and suburban development is encroaching upon these fertile farmlands and diverse green spaces. Little bee sucks the blossom clean, and the big bee gets all the honey is seen. Little man makes the cotton and the corn, and the big man goes around a tooting his horn. It looks to me we should all agree, what we need for the people is the farm relief. Urban sprawl, to me, is geared, uh, and I would say it, for greed. I drive 10 kilometers down here and I see the homes as close as possible where the backyards there isn't a native tree that could actually be fitted in somebody's own backyard without encroaching on five other properties. They're glad to be here. We really start to see this idea of suburbs taking off in the post-World War II era. And so they join the stream of family life in the suburbs, soon to become part of its familiar sights, soon to absorb its familiar sounds. Now this idea of, of suburbs and urban development has taken off so much in the past few decades that we're starting to see it now destroying animal habitats, farmland, and many other areas that need to be protected. Another problem we encounter with urban sprawl and development is homogenization, the act of making everything the same. You drive or walk through one of these subdivisions and notice that all the homes are the same shape, the same size, the same color. They all roughly have the same square footage, the same garage, same driveway, same grass growing out front. Additionally, these subdivisions tend to create economic pockets. That is to say that usually one economic class lives in these areas. And with these individual urban areas with only one economic class, we may start to see conflicts beginning between classes. You know, we see ghettos forming and increased crime rates. These suburbs tend to have catchy, pleasing, rural names, like Southfields Village, or the Gates of Countryside, or Valleywood. The ironic thing is, these names represent the landscape that got taken over by development. Now, these pastorally named suburbs are quite the opposite. They're busy, congested, polluted, and all the houses were built in bulk. There is no individuality existent in these developed areas. It's all about profits. Developers come in, build hundreds of houses in bulk, 
make their money, then leave and move to another area to develop, until we start to see hardly any space left to develop, especially in the southern Caledon area. The storm was formed about 25 years ago and it's really a coalition of, of different groups that got banded together on the, across the Oak Ridges Moraine which runs from the Niagara Escarpment 160 kilometers over to the Rice Plains to um, Rice Lake and the Tr Trent water system so it's a really long landscape and about 1990 is when this first wave of northern deve of development started coming out of Toronto People started to see changes, forests cut down, they started to see white boards going up, which is there's going to be an official plan amendment or a zoning bylaw amendment. Um, and so people, st and then they started, they realized that they were on this thing called the Oak Ridges Marine. So Storm was created to, for people to band together and to lobby the government, the provincial government, to say we need to protect this thing called the Oak Ridges Marine. important landform, the Oak Ridges Moraine, created by glaciers 12,000 years ago, stands in the way of urban development coming northwards from Toronto. Many environmental groups have been battling to keep the Oak Ridges Moraine intact from development, such as the world-renowned Sierra Club, stating that the area's delicate ecosystems are in danger of development pressures. However, these groups have succeeded in conserving thousands of acres on the moraine. After contacting several development companies, all of them declined to be interviewed for this film or questioned on the issue. Most often in humanity, when one group gains something, another group loses something. Now, do we protect our agriculture, or do we create more homes for people to live? Some will argue that these subdivisions provide homes, that our population has to live somewhere. But what about when people have nothing left to eat? What are we going to do then? <laughs> 